Hey folks, Technivorous here, and Kira has the new 4.6 beta available. So if you're interested in beta testing and checking out the latest version before it is available for full release, go ahead and check it out now. We're going to go over it real quick in this video, and I will leave a link down below. When you go to that page, you're going to want to click the link below the download 4.5 link that says download 4.6 beta, and that'll get you what you need. Let's jump right into checking this out and see some of the new features right now. All right, guys, welcome to the Technoverse channel. As I said, we are going to be looking at Kira 4.6, and today this software is still in beta, which means that it is not a full release. It is available to anyone who wants to test it out, however, and help give them feedback on how to fix bugs or anything that might pop up between now and the time that they do release to the public. So, for the time being, if you would like to check out the beta, you can go over to the Ultimaker website. I will leave a link down below, but if you're interested, it is ultimaker.com slash software slash ultimaker dash Kira. And what you're looking for is this little link right here with the info button next to it that says download Kira 4.6 beta. And when you click that, it will bring you over to the GitHub page here, at which point you can select one of these packages to download either the installer or the exe itself. Once that's done, you'll merely have to follow the usual installer protocol to install the software. And I'll make sure you're paying special attention if it offers you the chance to save your current version and not copy over it. Okay, this is really crucial, especially when using the beta versions, because sometimes Kira does put out a version with a bug or two. And I don't want you to lose any of your profile settings or anything like that. And the first thing you're going to notice when you open the beta for the first time is a thank you to all Kira users for helping in the fight against COVID-19. Now, as most of you know, uh, 3D printers have been pretty proactive in helping as much as they can with this fight. And this is their way of just saying thank you. And they also have a website up here that I will put in the description. Uh, that is a link for those of you who would like to know how to help or have a way that you can contribute as well. So um, then it goes into the standard list of what's new and i do have a little bit more extensive list than the list that you see here and we will go over that when the actual release comes out right now i just want to poke around and kind of see what are some of the things are make sure that our print is coming out properly so um new intent profiles uh that's great it says that they've added profiles for pc nylon cpe and cpe plus um and there are a couple of other additions as well. So it says a username field of view has contributed an ease of use improvement to the post processing plugin. The number of enabled post processing scripts will now display as a badge notification over the post processing scripts icon. So that has to do with stuff like uh, change at layer height and things like that. How many of those scripts you can have on active at the same time? It's a little bit easier to read now and to know what what exactly is going on there another one is uh the whole horizontal expansion of this one again contributed by smart avionics and when you visit the download page for kira 4.6 it will actually point out to you that these two have contributed quite a bit of the features that you find in not only this but the last version as well so um they've changed some changes to per model settings transparent support rendering and let's see no stair stepping for pva profiles they made some adjustments there separators in the extensions menu which uh, Field of View also contributed. It's a method for plugin authors to add separators between menu items so you can kind of uh, group things. Um, there is also an Ultimaker account sign in prompt now, and the installer has been updated. Infill mesh ordering. Um, this has a little breakdown here. When three objects overlapping each other and you set two of them to modify settings for infill, then the setting in fill mesh order determines which of the meshes gets priority. So that's basically processing order, which makes sense, I guess. A um, couple other changes here. And they also added uh, a couple of new printers. So Flying Bear printers, Magic Firm printers, and the HMS434 has been updated. There is also a, what does it say? Hussein Sale 2002 has contributed machine definitions for FabX Pro and print profiles for red materials. So there's some, some new profiles and new materials in there as well. So let's take a look. And right off the bat, you can tell it doesn't look that different. Everything is pretty much the same as it was. Um, my standard profiles are all in here. That's good. And it has imported pretty much everything that I had ready in 4.5. 
that's amazing. That's something I really am happy with. Um, one of the big things that they changed here is in the post-processing script. So um, let's go ahead and click modify G-code and we'll add a script just to see if we see the change immediately. Remaining time on LCD, enable. Window insert after. Oh, that's uh, insert G code command, not change. I was for this. This will change at the layer. Um, whenever I turn this on, I always remember, I always forget to turn it off. So um, it's pretty cool. Uh, there is basically just the lovely flow of care. There's one more thing I wanted to show you before I leave the actual beta, which is another slicer that I found. You may see this icon down here. This is the Kodak slicer. And uh, it's another lovely little gem like I'm not knocking Kodak at all because they know what they're doing in doing this, but you can see here it is an exact clone of Kira. So uh, when this is the software these people use with their printer, and you can set it up for any FFF machine, but it really uh, only comes with one profile for their Kodak machine. But uh, yeah, I came across this the other day. I thought that was pretty interesting as well. But that is basically going to be it. But that's it, at least until the full version comes out. So if you find yourself using Kira often and you'd like to contribute to the bug hunt, feel free to download the beta. There is a great new system for filing crash reports and letting them know if you're having any issues or anything like that. And the more feedback they get from the community, the better the software tends to be. So you will see another one of these Kira videos when the full release is out. And until then, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. Hit the like button as well. We will be back with many, many more videos on 3D printing and 3D printers. So stay tuned. As always, this channel is brought to you by the Spine Patreon supporters. If you'd like to support the channel on Patreon, head over to www.patreon.com slash technivorous. That's going to be it for this video. As always, I am Technivorous, and thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out our main channel page where we do a free giveaway for our subscribers every month. So far, we've given away things like a Capricorn PTFE tubing kit and spools of filament. So the giveaway videos are always pinned to our main channel page. So all you have to do is subscribe and leave a comment on the giveaway video for the current contest. Feel free to check out this video right here. YouTube picked it from my content just for you. And if you haven't already, you can hit the subscribe button right here. So what are you waiting for? Become a technivore now. Thanks again. Technivorous out.